What's up, Foot Clan? We got a great show for you today. We're talking about Muscle Wilson. We got all the stud muffins. We got a whole bunch of stinkers. We're going to sort it all out on today's show. Do not miss it. Hey, Foot Clan, Zorro.com is where you'll find everything you need for businesses of any size in almost any industry. They have tools, equipment, and supplies for everything you need, whether you need stuff like uh, electrical, plumbing, manufacturing, or more. Zorro's got it from brands you know and trust. Visit Zorro.com slash footballers. That's Z O R O.com slash footballers to sign up for Zmail and get 15% off your first order. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. That's a healthy man over there. Welcome back. I'm back, baby. I'm a grown man. I'm healthy. <laughs> it's your Wait. turn, Mike. Go. It's your turn to get down with the sickness. Well, Bro- it's actually Brooks's turn. Yeah, yeah Bro- Brooks is Brooks is locking that down right now. Uh, Monday, November fourth. Halloween is over, but we got tricked this weekend plenty. Certainly, uh, lots going on. We'll get into the stinkers of the week, the fantasy stud muffins. We've got injury news. We've got Monday Pun Day. We've got all the fantasy football reaction of the weekend. We've got starts of the week that were either very good or the worst of the worst. Sometimes that happens, and we just have to take it on the chin, right? I mean, sometimes you feel really bad at your job. Mm. <laughs> Every now and then. I'll say this because, look, this is recorded. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can't get away with nothing here. We, we we put it out there. We get things right. We get things wrong. We get things right more, and we get things wrong. But when you get something wrong, it's the only thing you remember. Yeah. It's it actually, the, it, if it makes you feel better out there, Foot Clan, we melt into the couch with sadness when that happens, when Allen Robinson catches one pass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. when DJ Chark and Chris Conley um, – had Gardner Minshew went out for tea in the midst of their game in London. It's the only explanation. So there were, I mean, there were good starts, but there were like sometimes. I mean, you should see us around the studio. Sometimes you're like, okay, well, all right, that started the week didn't work out, but he didn't kill you. That's how we comfort ourselves so that we can sleep at night, right? And then sometimes they kill you, and sometimes you don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So we've got a lot of reaction from the weekend. I I have some takeaways that I think are. Uh, going to be helpful for those of you going into the fantasy playoffs. I'm sure uh, my cohorts here have some as well. Let's go ahead and jump into Monday Punday. Get sophisticated to start the show. We put it out on Twitter. I believe when I checked this morning, there were 666 replies Uh to the tweet, (sighs) which made me feel very scared. (laughs) But let's do it. Oh, yes. Yes, Christian... McCarry me. <laughs> he sure has. Fantasy yes. MVP for sure. Oh, here's a bad one. Phony Michelle. Oh, come on. One trick Sony. Eh. Man. Gardner Minch. Ew. Mm. Or Gardner Min Poo. <laughs> Gardner Min Poo with his wide receiver DJ Shark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Sometimes you gamble and lose. Oh, let's keep it going on the same theme. Devon Turd what? Adams. <laughs> Monday poop day. What hey. is happening? Key Nun Allen. Oh, mm. goodness. Jacoby Regret. Oh, oh, the guy got he got stomped on. Yeah, he's got something MCL-ish. What did, what did I call that when Mahomes got it? Oh, man, what did Kerplunked? you? Kerplunked? Kerplunked, yes. Whoa, a fan. Muscle Wilson. <laughs> I like that one. (laughs) DK second half. All right. I I like that one. Danny Amendola. Ooh, here's a sad one. Robbed (sighs) robbed me Anderson. Yes. More like robbed me again, Anderson. (laughs) Over and over. Jonu Myth. (laughs) That's pretty good. And Jason. Yeah, I got this one. Deshaun Jack Squat. Oh, so, so there, there were lots 
and lots and lots of very good ones. It's a good way to get it out. You notice, though, the, the Monday Punday is a perfect uh, psychological microcosm of fantasy football because 80% of them are about what went wrong. You always remember. I mean, this is, this is uh, you know, a psychological scientific truth, too. Show. I mean, to show as well. The, the, you know, the, there's, there's studies talk about how you remember things that happen bad so much more. Yeah. You know, Tom Brady has six rings, and he remembers the ones that he lost, you know, the, the helmet catch um, yeah. and things like that stick with you more. So, you know, that, that stinks. It's true. It's true. We've got a lot to get into today. I encourage you to check us out on YouTube. Yeah. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell, support the show. We appreciate all the reviews, the subscriptions on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening. The website's the fantasyfootballers.com. You can use the start sit tool and check out a bunch of great articles each and every day of the week. And then uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers as well. Let's get into the rewind. Weekly rewind. All right. We mentioned on Friday we knew Josh Gordon would find a new home. But he found a good one. He ended up in Seattle. Josh Gordon claimed off of waivers from the Patriots by the Seattle Seahawks. Passed his physical. Hopes to play Monday night against the 49ers. That does not seem like a great place to start Josh Gordon on your lineup. But I said a lot of things on the show about Josh Gordon. The things he was up against to be relevant in fantasy football. And I can't imagine a better landing spot than a team that has Russell Wilson, that's willing to push the ball down the field, escape the pocket, do some of the things that they do on offense. Wilson is arguably the NFL MVP. He's the leader in pa touchdown passes. He just came off a monster week. And he and Josh Gordon gets to replace David Moore, or you know what I mean. Like he is right. a significant improvement. I'm over glad you the replacement. I was gonna say I'm glad you brought it up like that because it's he is certainly if Pete Pete Carroll's anything, he's a loyalist. He's not going to punish DK Metcalf, who by the way, number three fantasy receiver this week, evolving every week, part of their future. He's not going to punish Tyler Lockett. He's going to use Josh Gordon, and it's going to be at the expense of Jerome Brown, David Moore, you know, help with Will Disley out. You saw Hollister catch two touchdowns this week. Gordon has the opportunity to have splash games, but much like any player in this offense, it will come on the efficiency of Russell Wilson. How do you feel about the signing? I mean, I was shocked that he got that far, as were the Seahawks. You know, they they were shocked. They were 28th in the list, and they, they got to him. So all the teams that, you know, you thought might claim him, you know, everyone wanted him to go to the Eagles, they, they could have. Teams avoided it. They did their due diligence and decided against it. Um, but I, I think it's good for Seattle. I do wonder. It's good for Russell. It's great for Russell. He's who it's best for, just another solid weapon. I do wonder going forward if, it, if it's a little bit of a negative for DK Metcalf because they both – have that similar skill set of just being a monstrous human being that can go down the field, catch a jump ball. So maybe now those get split a little bit, but it's it's too too early to tell. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I also find it – is it wrong of me to be rooting for – like this strategic play that the Patriots made was to wait for the trade deadline, release him into waivers so that they could avoid him at all costs going to a contender – Mm. Is it bad for me to really, really root for Seattle and New England to meet now in the Super Bowl and Josh Gordon to get to make a triumphant return? No, that'd be awesome. That'd be pretty fun. All right, this sucked. Adam Thielen re-injured the hamstring in the first quarter of Week 9. He fully goosed your fantasy team. Oh, he goosed my listener league team where I lost by less than a point. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> he was close to coming back on the short week last week, so we expected him back this week. And now because what? of that... I, you know, if I had, if I had Adam Thielen, I started him and I think most people did. <clears throat> yeah. And that sucked. And so now when he comes back for the first time, which he'll probably miss, I mean, usually when people re-aggravate an injury, it's, it's a little bit longer timeline and now you're going to have a really hard time trusting that start. So this is, this is terrible news 
for Adam Thielen owners. Yes, it is, Jason. Terrible news for Deshaun Jackson owners. Finally active. <laughs> Aggravated his abdomen injury. Don't I, worry. He'll, I, he'll be good in a couple weeks. Well, yeah, and you, you don't know what's what. Doug Peterson said basically <laughs> what? they pulled him precautionary-wise. He said he felt something, pulled him, examined him, said he's okay. A couple weeks is what Doug Peterson's saying, but at this point... They've got their bye week. Destroying your fantasy team. Do they? Do they know the season's almost done? Right. <laughs> well, they've got the bye week. Couple weeks. Then they've got the New England Patriots. Um, so you're. I mean, you're not going to play in the next two weeks. It's really tough, though. You know, if he were to come back for that playoff stretch of Miami, the Giants, the Redskins. I mean, whew, that'd be great. But you, you just can't keep holding him forever, right? And hurt your roster. I mean, I, I talked to all in the off season about not drafting Kareem Hunt because it's a detriment to your team to hold someone that's taking up a bench spot, and that's that's what DJX has been all year. I think you probably need to move on. Yeah, I'd rather like I'd, I'd rather have my handcuff than Deshaun Jackson. Alshon Jeffrey tweaked his ankle in the fourth quarter. Carson Wentz is crying in the corner of a room somewhere. Jacoby Brissett exited with a knee injury. It has been it's diagnosed. It's a sprained left MCL. Oh, so we don't have the MCL-ish injury comments anymore? No, it is. They have dropped the ish. Okay. That's always good to know what you're dealing with. Uh, so we'll see if he's able to return. It could be, a what, a couple weeks potentially? Yeah, I, probably. I, you know, call me crazy. I don't think Brian Hoyer is a bad backup any more than – uh, Jacoby Brissett is so uh, I don't I don't expect the Colts to necessarily miss a beat depending on the other injuries they're dealing with Ty Hilton and and um, you know if if Hilton and is Ryan out, Kelly right their center uh, can Brian Hoyer spin the ball laces out potentially oh goodness that was unfortunate yeah. had you, have you never seen Ace Ventura <laughs> <laughs> yes that that is the, one of the more instructional videos that they show I'm just saying, NFL like, holders. I've never taken a snap. I, it might shock people. I've never taken a professional snap okay. in the NFL. All right. Good to know. But if I'm the holder, I am very, very aware it's laces out. Well, it was great because he spun it laces in. Yeah. Like it wasn't like just. Like he caught it he laces out. Exactly. Like, whoops. Let, let me fix this. <laughs> I've been told to spin it. <laughs> I've got money riding on them. Uh, maybe that just gives Adam Vinatieri a, a nice excuse for the shankopotamus <laughs> yeah that's the thing is like there's no way those laces made the ball go that far to the left right i've always wondered that where you hear the kickers they want they don't want to kick into the laces but it really changes the kick that I mean, much i don't it's doubt crazy. That, it kick, that it changes the kick but he missed that field goal by about a hundred yards so <laughs> it can't possibly be just the laces uh preston Will williams uh knee spray was having a great game yeah him and Devonte parker uh, here's big news because I know, Mike, you were potentially looking forward to Cam Newton returning. <sighs> yeah. It's not looking good. He's frustrated. Injured reserves on the table. For all we know, by the time you hear this, he could be in on injured reserve, but his ankle's not improving. It's very, very likely we'll see um, Allen for the rest of the year. Yeah, I, 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 expect, I expect him to – I mean, if, if, if he's had this much rest and it hasn't got better, then – you know, action's going to need to be taken, and, and that's going to put him on, on IR. All right, Brandon Cook's positive visit with a concussion specialist. Oh, okay, that's great. Better than a negative visit. That's true. Yep. All right, Weekly Rewind News brought to you by the Sleeper app. You doing okay with your microphone over there? Well, it's just funny because now what happens I, over time, when I move my mic, <laughs> it moves Mike's microphone. So, oh, because they're kind of connected? Yeah, so it's it's really so fun. So is that to, why you were laughing, Mike? Yes. You, your yeah. mic just started moving? It's like, he's like, we've we've had enough of you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just, um, let, me, let me move that out of your mouth way. The, we do have the update for you. Yes. Update from Monday Night Football. Mm. Hopefully you saw it. Hopefully you're following some news somewhere or our socials. But Sterling Shepard is out, and he is back in the concussion protocol. <laughs> That's a weird really way to say confusing. that. He's he, back. He is out, and he is back. I am, em I am emphasizing that this is not good. Like You don't, you don't leave the concussion protocol 
So he's Trent, been- I want to have a whole new segment like that at some point. Foot Clan, Sterling Shepard is back on concussion protocol. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, one other update, our ridiculous water bet that I was very – uh, oh, pr- Carlos Hyde v. Adrian Peterson. Yes, I was very from bullish 1996. on Adrian Peterson. I knew he was going to have a great game, and so I would take the water bet against Carlos Hyde. Adrian Peterson had a great game, he 130 did. yards. He did. Lost the bet because Carlos Hyde went bananas. <laughs> you only lost by, in our league of record, 0. .6 points, Jason. Yeah, that's no good. All right, it's time to move on. Let's get into the stud muffins. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. What more can you say about Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson, five passing touchdowns. Absolutely incredible against Tampa Bay. 29 for 43, 378 and five. We all knew when they got the ball that it was over. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, it was. So... 22 touchdowns, one interception. That's pretty good. He look. That's ridiculous. Russell Wilson is unstoppable. He's just it doesn't matter what you do. You 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 want to you want to pressure him, you want to drop into coverage, you want whatever you do, he has an answer for it. He is phenomenal. And I I think that the the Seahawks are a legit Super Bowl contending team with what appears to be a, a below average defense at this point. And I think that's the only thing that can hold them back. Russell Wilson managing to overcome. You know, he doesn't have Doug Baldwin anymore. Loses Will Disley. Is throwing the ball to Tyler Lockett and a rookie. In a, in a clothing store. Mm, oh, Hollister. Hollister. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll, we may talk Look about good, him Look good, play bit. good. <laughs> Look good, play good. That's what he says every time he comes out on the field. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo had the big game on Thursday night. Yes. Best game of his career, fantasy-wise. Matthew Stafford continues to impress. Almost had one more touchdown to end that game, but still 406 yards and three touchdowns. See, there's a good start of the week. We did it. Hey! Yeah. He's on pace for 5,000 yards. And wow. And he is second in the NFL with touchdown in touchdown passes. He's already had the bye week. He is having a career year. That's what he's doing. And with on Johnson going to IR – and having very little with the running game, they've put it on the arm of Matthew Stafford, and he said, sure. And it's yeah. not just dink, dunk oh, in no. the front of the field. It's, if, you're, aren't, if you are not watching any of these Lions games, they are incredibly fun to watch because it's basically so, every other drop back. Stafford takes a three-step. He's like, oh, see how far I can throw this ball. When, when we're watching, we have our nine – large TVs that were, you know, trying to catch every moment of all the games and we're together. And it's so fun because, you know, most of the games there's just normal plays happening. But whichever TV the Lions game is on, you know, it's like put a 90-second timer and we go, oh, it's a deep ball. Yep. Watch out. It's so much fun. But he's got Chicago this week. In Chicago, are you playing Stafford? He's certainly NBA jammed his way into yeah. relevance right now. It's a tough call this week. I'm I'm staring this decision down. I'm I, I'm the Patrick Mahomes owner. I've been riding Stafford. Stafford's been putting oh. up huge games. I think Mahomes may return and solve this problem for me. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I don't blame anybody for taking the shot. Chicago has been struggling on offense, to say the least. You could get some short fields. You could get a situation where Stafford ends up with three touchdowns, even if it's not 400 yards. Yeah, I mean, one thing that we saw this week is that great players – on offense, can beat great defenses. Lamar Jackson. Oh, he had a game. He had himself a very nice game. Two rushing touchdowns. One. I mean, this is the thing. His, his, his passing line, 163 yards and one touchdown. That's quarterback trash. Except, for fantasy. Yeah, yeah for fantasy. Yeah. Except when, when you can add 61 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns, you had a phenomenal day. And this was one of those players who was – you know, I would say 50% of leagues he was benched in. You you had that choice of, do I want to take the player or the defense? And, um, you know, I think in the beginning of last week, we were much more worried. Towards the end of last week, we were saying, I think you start Lamar Jackson, but that was a rough decision. I was still worried. I would have benched him if I had a, like, Stafford. Those were the types of players we were talking about. 
And that game, that was that game was three completely different parts where it opened up the Patriots were not ready at all for what the Ravens were going to do. 17 point lead early for the Ravens. And then it was felt like three quarters straight where the Ravens could not get anything done before turning it back on in the fourth. Small uh, diatribe on the about that game. This felt like you were entering the Gladiators Arena, and you know how they sometimes they, they lift the big uh, door and they release the beasts? Mm -hmm. Except for what came out was like five or six tight ends. That's, <laughs> I mean, whether it, Boyle, Hurst, uh, yeah. the, the uh, what was his name? Ricard, who's not really a tight end. He's a defensive tackle that also plays fullback that also caught passes. He's also the captain of a starship. Uh, yeah, Captain Ricard. Yes. And he's got humongous quads. Mm. I mean, they were basically coming out there with scripted plays. Requads. <laughs> Requads. Mike's just, he is not hearing a word I'm saying. He is searching for Ricard related puns, jokes, and nicknames, I'm and he's sorry. succeeding. Uh, but here, here's what I actually want to say I think you talk about things that fantasy owners remember. I am very concerned if I'm the Mark Andrews reliant playoff bound fantasy team because there's four straight games now for Mark Andrews where he hasn't been. He left a really strong impression to start the year. Yeah. But Hayden Hurst involved. Boyle heavily involved. Uh, limited passing total yardage. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. You know, so you've kind of programmed your brain. Like, I have a league where I had Mark Andrews, Darren Waller, okay? Start the year. I can trade one of these dudes. I traded the wrong one. I traded Waller. I feel so much more comfortable, even though he had a, a rough week, right. more comfortable with Waller in the offense than I do Mark Andrews. So just don't get yourself fully trapped. You might not have a better option than Mark Andrews. I'm, you probably don't. Yeah, and, and I would also just throw out, you know, you're not always going to face the Patriots who try to take away your, your number one option. You know, it was but he about, wasn't even on the field for half the game. I mean, he that's was... My, that's the problem I'm, I have with it. Yeah, when he was on the field, you could see, you know, the, the, the Patriots were not paying attention to the Ricards uh, of the world. They were f more focused on, you know, uh, the, Andrews. Sub 200 passing yards. In fact, sub 170 passing yards three of the past four weeks for Lamar Jackson. Which, yeah, two for 39 for Andrews and against now the Seahawks. And now Hollywood, Hollywood Brown is healthy, so he's going to absorb a lot of that yardage. I'm, I'm with Andy that you still play Andrews, but you're – The floor's lower than it was yeah, to start the year. It's shaky. Um, and then, you know, you had Deshaun Watson doing his thing again in London – Derek Carr had a nice game, 289-2. and two. He continues to run the offense well. Do not forget about Ryan Fitzpatrick. Mm. I think we can. No, well, you you got to give the man his due. Do you? Yes. 288 yards and three touchdowns? I choose not to. Oh, that's a I'm, very strange I'm, thing. I'm on the give credit side because I love watching this yeah. guy play. Yeah, yeah, I like you're it, not going to play him, though, right? No, that's not at all what I'm saying. Just he had a great game, and it should be called attention to. The, no, all right. The, the Dolphins are no longer winless. The Dol <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Congrats, Jets fans. Before we move into the rest of the studs, I want to thank today's sponsor, Lightstream. The holidays are approaching, and you may be thinking about how you're going to save some extra money. Well, consolidate your high-interest credit card balances to a lower rate and save with Lightstream. Get a rate as low as 5.95 APR. With auto pay much lower than the national average interest rate of over 20%. Plus, your rate is fixed, so as rates continue to rise, your low rate won't budge. There are no fees, and you can even get your money as soon as the day you apply. For our listeners, apply now to get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers subject to credit approval rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject subject to change without notice. Visit livestream.com slash footballers for more information. And Foot Clan, the holidays are almost here. You know what that means. Gifts. Gifts for you. Gifts for someone else. Gifts for G me. Gifts for myself. And great gifts are Untuck It shirts. Andy's been wearing Untuck It shirts forever. I was always jealous because he's tall, he's slim. I'm not. And the nice thing is I have found out that Untuck It 
They're made for every Unrelated size. Unrelated to the shirt, he's just jealous. No, yeah. Yeah, right, <laughs> just, just <laughs> jealous. Uh, but look, uh, Untuck It has, and, and this is so kind of them, a relaxed fit. And I, I mean, that's what they call it, but it fits me perfectly. It's wonderful. Their shirts are designed to fit men of all shapes and sizes, and you wear them untucked, and they fall to that perfect length no matter your size. With more than 50 fit combinations, untucked shirts look great on tall, short, slim, and athletic guys, and my style of guys as well. <laughs> look, whether you're shopping for the perfect holiday gift or just trying to craft a smart, relaxed style on your own, Untuck It is the way to go. Their shirts are awesome. You can check it out at more than 80 brick-and-mortar stores. Visit untuckit.com and use code FOOTBALLERS for 20% off at checkout. That's Untuck it, U N T U C K I T dot com, and promo code footballers for twenty percent off. All right, running back studs. Christian McCaffrey oh. is a cheat, oh, hum. a cheat code, <laughs> having an LT esque season on pace for the second most fantasy points all time with Kyle Allen. Brooks, I'm not going to make you speak because you're sick, but I just want to say. Remember that time we traded for Christian McCaffrey? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just stay healthy, Christian, because you're going to win a lot of people fantasy football championships. Josh Jacobs. Jingle Heimer Smith. What's another start of the week? For 120 and two. Yes. <laughs> we we got to point them out, If you're going to point those out, Jason, you better point the duds out, too. Mm -hmm. Although I know you will not. Well, I'm just pointing <laughs> mine out. That's yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Kenyon Drake, obviously the monster game. We'll are, have some are you bought in? Or was that just I mean, that was that was a magical Halloween night? I'm bought into the fact that Ken Drake is talented and played to the same strengths that Chase Edmonds exploited in this offense, which is the ability to get around the edge, take advantage of some of the misdirection brought on by Cliff Kingsbury. He has this, a similar speed profile as what Edmonds was showing in the offense, probably a little bit better. And Drake, you know, he made the most of 15 touches. My concern is. You know, t 10 touches. Does Kenyon Drake, what do you do with Kenyon Drake with 10 touches in Arizona? You could probably roll him out there as a flex against Tampa. So I'm bought into the fact that if he gets enough work, he'll be good. I just, David Johnson is going to be back in that game. Yeah, right, David Johnson Tampa. should be back. Tampa is a surprisingly good team against the run, but what Cliff Kingsbury has done has really opened things up for running backs for fantasy. I think as the season goes along... If I mean, San Francisco wasn't stopping running backs. Th yeah, they uh, had I mean, been. they had been. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you can utilize Kenyon Drake going forward, but certainly not to the workhorse role that he was when he was the only guy in town. Let's throw it back to you, Mike. Kenyon Drake versus David Johnson against Tampa. If David Johnson... He should be healthy and active. Which of those two guys do you play? David. Okay. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. I had to think about it, but, but the, yeah. I, we were, if he's healthy and back, I'll play DJ. We had that same decision back-to-back -back weeks with Edmonds and David Johnson, and one week you were right and one week you were wrong. Right. If you pick David. Also, on the Josh Jacobs side, uh, before we move on from him, the amount of carries that he was getting, we we couldn't believe it while we are watching. This is like going into the fourth quarter, late in the third or something. Like, I think it was early in the third that yeah. he was already at the 20-carry mark. I mean, they were just they were just using him like crazy. Um Here's another back that had a good game and I am really excited about because it finally looked different. It looked like he caught up to the season. Melvin Gordon, is he back? 20 for 80 and 2. Also had 30 receiving yards on four targets. He looked so much better in this game to me than he had the previous few games. And I'm talking film-wise, not just outcome. Well, it's a commitment to the run. We've seen this benefit Adrian Peterson, and they dropped Ken Wisenhunt and committed to Melvin Gordon in this game. They obviously played incredible defense that lent itself towards 20 carries, but I'm 100% with you, Jay, and I kind of laughed when I listened to Melvin Gordon talk about this game because they said, hey, are you back? And he says, yeah, I'm getting there. And then they go, do you think that the change in offensive coordinator helped your running game? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, didn't see that. it was basically oh. like, yeah, that really helped us. Wow. So I'm excited about this guy. Devin Singletary, yep. oh, yeah. 20 for nine. Did you hear that? 20 for 95 and a touchdown. Another uh, three for 45 on four targets through the air, which Whoop. is ironic because he had a 49-yard reception. Can you Woof. double check that? The other two must have been behind the line of scrimmage and just didn't turn into anything. But 
Devin Singletary, this is why in Dynasty, uh, or I'm sorry, in our Keeper League, two weeks ago I traded Alshon Jeffrey for him. I wanted the shot. In the second half, you're looking at the Montgomerys, the Singletaries. You're saying, can I find a diamond in the rough? And maybe we did with Singletary. Cleveland, Miami on the schedule coming up. You know, we, we knew the breakout game was going to come. Obviously, we did not know it would be this game. Um, it was still a worthy – I mean, a lot of people started him. He right? in all, the matchup, all my lineups that I had. The, the matchup was great uh, against Washington. And like you said, Cleveland and Miami coming up. I'm not – petrified of either of those single single I, I have a hard time not saying single, single carry. carry because that's how Andy referred to him every play uh yesterday but um look he's a really good back for a team that is going to be in positive game scripts more often than not and really wants to run the ball the fact that he took over as the lead ball carrier you knew it was going to happen at some point you're not going to stay with Frank Gore how did Frank Gore do Mike uh poorly I don't know 11 for 15. Yeah. That's more That's more than a yard of carry. For 15, stuffed five times that I saw with a, a one you yard to go. Referring to the first and goal on the foot line and that's Frank Gore three times well, in a row. Well, that's why I threw it to you is because ah, you yes. were making a big deal about that goal line stand situation, and Gore couldn't get it done in it short It was very yardage. funny. It was very funny. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh David Montgomery had the worst first half you could imagine. Ends up with really another not a good game. Ends up with another good game on the stat sheet in terms of fantasy, fantasy. points. Fourteen for forty and two, but had a big catch, uh, three total catches. Chicago is burning. They need a quarterback change. Yeah, man. everybody in the world knows it. Yeah, this team can play top level best in football defense but you wonder if that defense this happens all the time I mean do they believe that what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball is going to make a difference or do you become discouraged if you get stop after stop and your offense has nine yards in the first half right Whew, man Matt Nagy is not a visionary Mitchell Trubisky is not a quarterback and here we are with a, a flop of a season and a tilting Matt Nagy. And, and look, if you're a Chicago fan, where do you go from here? Uh, to the draft. To the draft. <laughs> Mike, Damian Williams, 12 for 125 and one. Yes. And his starting job back. This, or is it? I get, yeah, look, it, it, it seemed like it was back, and then Shady took it, and then Shady fumbled it away. But Damian. I, the same way Jason was talking about Melvin Gordon, this is what Damian looked like last week when he finally got in the game. You're like, oh, there's the the Damian Williams that they gave the extension to. Looks like he's balling out. Hit a 91 yard touchdown run, and which Tyreek caught up to him. It was very like it looked like the scene. It looked like the uh, in the guys have watched Angry Birds anytime recent. I've seen it. But the yellow bird, who's the speed, and like right. everything else slows down. That's what happened when Tyreek Hill was, was running up to Damien. Who, Damien is very fast. Damien is fast, and Damien looked like me running out there <laughs> while Tyreek was streaking to catch up with him. But the, the reality is... Moving forward, what is Damien Williams? Moving forward, he's the starting running back for the Chiefs. It's been very hard to tell, and you don't want to get hoodwinked by this, you know, because it's Bill Belichick of old... You'd say, oh, now we know, and then you'd come into – and the next I'm, game plan is just completely the other way. But when you talk about 12 carries to three carries and you look at the snap percentages where Damian Williams was the guy pretty much always on the field, I don't know how you could then say, okay, next week I'm going to take another week with him on my bench and wait. Because if you can start the lion's share of the Kansas City Chiefs backfield – that's a good thing for fantasy. Yeah, I don't want to take anything away from Damian Williams, but if you did take away the 91-yard run, he was 11 for 34 on the game. So Damian Williams is still going to have a floor that is ugly, and that's what's going on in that backfield. I, you know, with Patrick Mahomes back, you'd hope he does more than two for three on two targets. That's kind of where we expected Damian Williams to make his haze in the passing game. Lev Bell... Garbage man his way to a fine game. Yeah, that was Woof. that that team is another one that 
you got to be really worried about. Jordan Howard had a nice game. Um, one of the good starts of the week this week. Philip Lindsay was nine for 92 and one. He's so fast. I couldn't believe. Like, I feel like every time towards the end of that game, I'd look up and I'd go, oh, Lindsay's, you know, breaking off a run. And then to, to go back and realize he only had nine carries. He's just, he's so electric. Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf at the wide receiver position, number one and uh, three on the week. Mike Evans, 12 for 180 and one on 16 targets. He is bigger, faster, stronger, open all the time. Monster. Do you remember when everybody was really worried about Mike Evans? He did put up a zero. Right. No, no, no. I'm not I mean, saying he a, hasn't had like, a bad game, but I'm just saying people were like, you know, it's the Chris Godwin show now. Right. And Mike Evans is the is the number two. He's the clear number two. But the air yards didn't say that. The targets said that they were tied. Uh, and, and now, I mean, you finally you're getting from Mike Evans what you drafted Mike Evans to be. I mean, more than that, right? Way more than he's that. He's, the, he's been insane. I believe he's the wide receiver one on the season. So it like makes sense when you go for 180. That's pretty, that's pretty high. He had a zero and yeah. a bye week. He's 198 yards and two, 180 and one the past two weeks. That's that's ridiculous. Tyreek Hill's really, really good. Six for 140 and one. Kenny Galladay, monster week again. Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay both had huge weeks on the same week. So that's friendly of them. Yeah. What do you make of the Emmanuel Sanders? Seven for 112 and a touchdown. Nine targets. I think he he's looked very in sync with the handsome one. I think it means a lot for Jimmy Garoppolo as a streaming option to have Emmanuel Sanders, and I think Emmanuel Sanders is certainly a flex to wide receiver two type of guy right okay. now. And you have phenomenal matchups going forward. You get Arizona again in two weeks, which you could say, oh, Patrick Peterson, but Arizona with Patrick Peterson has been beat on the reg. And then Seattle, Seattle's such a good matchup for – well, it's three straight home games, right? Yeah, and yeah. So it's Seattle, Arizona, Green Bay. Uh, I, I'm I'm really happy with Emmanuel Sanders in my lineup. All right, Noah, fantastic. Had a breakout performance, really a breakout play. <laughs> three for one, fifteen and one on four targets. You I, have to watch the play. It's he, incredible. It was, Noah is Gronkian, very Gronkian. Noah Fant truck sticks a defender. And appears to not lose any momentum it was, whatsoever. It was a bug. Like, he, <laughs> yes, it was the a, same the way windshield. of when you yeah, – A bug on the windshield. Noah Fant did not know that there was someone trying to tackle him. That guy <laughs> bounced off of him like a helicopter. And you were right. It was so weird. It was like no momentum lost. He's just running, and then this guy <laughs> smacks into him like it's a brick wall. But Noah Fant is unaware. It was very fun. Although, although terrible tackling with the other yeah, two He guys. broke two more tackles, I believe, right You got a that. bye week coming up. I'm I'm happy to see it from a, uh, a rookie tight end. Big play. We, we had big week from Hawkinson week one. I'm not excited no. about Noah Fant. Every week we've kind of had – one of the big guys do their thing, and then there be a bunch of kind of no names that that stepped up. The big guy this week was Zach Ertz, hey, the buddy. big nickname. Nine for one hundred three and one on eleven targets. Um, we had Jacob Hollister with two touchdowns for Russell Wilson. Okay, he's not Will Disley athletically. He's not going to be as involved, but Russell Wilson is a benevolent man. And Jacob Hollister benefit from benefited from it. And then yes. George Kittle is six for seventy nine and one again. I think six for seventy nine and one. They could just ride it in for the rest of the year. I feel like that's what he's going to do every game. I would be very happy with that. All right. Any any other big time performers you guys want to talk about, or do you want to get well, in, do you get into the stink, Mike? Do you buy into Muhammad Sanu's targets? I was pretty impressed with it, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. Fourteen targets. I mean. This was most new coming in. Ten receptions, right? Yeah, ten for eighty-one and a score. I mean, it was it was Edelman and, and most new. I know they were in a negative game script, but is it like okay, Sanu, I'm I'm playing him every week now. I'd play him over Dorset. Yes, that's for sure. Right. I think most new is the two. Yes. All right, let's move on. Stinkers of the week, presented by Odor Eaters. Oh, Gardner. 
Oh, Gard- uh. This may legitimately be the last you see of Gardner this year. Uh, 27 for 47, 309, two picks, no touchdowns. Uh, two fumbles. Took a big fat dump overseas is look, what is in my notes from Kyle. I choose to look at it that the gardener had to fertilize mm. his soil. Oh, yes. sweet mercy. <laughs> Dude, that soil is going to be it's, so fertile. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, the, the strawberries that will grow out of this land. Record breaking. Will be the size. The juiciest. Of my foot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about pooping in big boy pants this was an opportunity against a defense that somehow got better without jj watt dude what the heck <laughs> this is the fourth time this year i'm i'm sorry but i like the the process the analysis of when when you're when you're a struggling defense and you lose a superstar defensive player this happened to denver when they lost bradley chubb and all of a sudden the next week they were great at stopping the run same thing happened to kansas city who was struggling and and they lost uh, Chris Jones. Chris Jones. And then the next week, they're like, oh, lo- look how great we are. You, The Texans are a terrible defense this year. They lose J.J. Watt, who's been really good this year. And then they're like, this great de- – what is happening? Well, the Jets tried to do it. They traded away Leonard Williams <laughs> to see if they could get better That's on defense. That's not how the magic works. Right. You it's just gotta trade be, him. It's got to be injury because it's morale. It's like the yes. other teams, the other players are, we got you. Yeah, maybe. What, what does feel extra bad about this if I was like, guys – Gardner, last week, he threw for over 300 yards, and he ran for 34 yards. That's a good week. Yeah. But it wasn't. Because instead of touchdowns, they were turnovers. Yeah. and Turnovers? Turnovers. <laughs> very <laughs> Sorry. Nice. This is a very uh. stinky show. Here's the thing. We had Allen Robinson and the CNC Music Factory, Chris Conley and DJ Chark. Those were problems for your fantasy team. But if yep. you take the car into the mechanic and they go, we need to find the source of the problem, welcome to Gardner Minshew and Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky was 10 for 21 for 125 yards. It was as if uh, a, a mist, a ghost of a quarterback was standing behind center. At this point, Chase Daniel would be an improvement for the offense. But do do you think that there's any possibility – that they come to their senses and do that. Doubtful. I, I think there is a possibility. It, not not as far as starting this next week. I don't think they're going to make that transition. But Trubisky, I, I don't see him getting better. And so if you go into next game and at halftime, your quarterback has been Trubiskying the whole game, I, I think they will make an in-game change at some point. And if that actually turns things around for that game and they win – then you're going to have a big conversation in Chicago. If you want to know what I think, it's that Mitch Trubisky has a really sore quad. Real sore. Like might miss the week kind of quad. <laughs> that's what. I that's see. how you get a little beta beep, test on the beep. Chase Daniel. Like, Mitch, you look beat up. No, I'm fine. I'm fine, coach. No, no, no. No, you're not. You're it, not fine. Oh, what? I just ran into you with a golf cart. I'm so sorry, <laughs> oh, Mitch. Yeah. So you, we're getting a... Well, he said he, was, Harding situation. he said he was fine. I got to make sure that those quads get a little <laughs> bruised up. Oh, my gosh. He's yeah, and, so bad. Well, the, the thing is, is, you know, Allen Robinson is a great player. That's why he was picked. It doesn't matter. If you're attached to, I mean, it's, it's, this is like sitting next to a person who farts. You're going to get blamed for it. <laughs> All right. Because I'm staying on brand for the, this show. I hope you enjoy oh, um, the stinkers of the, the week. stinkers of the week. All right, running back stinkers. What happened to Aaron Jones? Oh, you could say the whole Green Bay Packers. The what whole, happened sure. to the Green Bay Packers? Well, they were waiting to get Devontae Adams back. <laughs> what they, happened to Devontae Adams? Man, that was crazy. The The Los Angeles Chargers, they, they fire their offensive coordinator, and the whole team takes a step up as far as just real football. The defense looked great. Aaron Rodgers looked lost. Aaron Jones... Didn't even get the opportunity to do much. Eight carries. It was just a complete implosion well, by one, Green Bay. One, one catch. That's where yeah. he was making his money. Yeah, so the, the carry count actually is not that uh, surprising to me. It is the first time he's been below double-digit carries, but him and Jamal have been splitting time. It was the it was the receptions that were making the difference. He still had four targets, but that was, man, so that, that one feels can, can real we, bad. I wanted to walk out there and open hand slap Jamal Williams across the face. Why? 
Why? When he oh did oh, a oh, monster yes. touchdown okay. dance, yeah, okay. scoring at nineteen nothing, and he does this long super celebration in the end zone. I would have respected if Rodgers walked out there and just slapped him and said, "What are you doing?" Yeah, the game was pretty much over. You lost, and he's celebrating his touchdown. Well, like, I don't mind like oh, he spiked the football, but this was like full on. I planned this in front of a mirror. Mm-hmm. When you have something planned. Oh, and you get the opportunity. Yeah, that's. Right. I wonder but, what Al Borland thought of that because oh. he's back there gazing up. He's shaking his head. No, he's not. A, he's not a happy man. Because he's one. a huge Packer now, fan. As uh, you know, the the analysis here to me is to mostly throw this in the yes. trash. I'm not going to overreact to any of these performances. I'm not going to worry that Aaron Rodgers has lost it or that Aaron Jones can't get it going or that Devontae Adams. You know. This was just a bad game. Teams have bad games, and they're going to bounce back. What about Keenan Allen? Now, that one is a little bit more scary. We have, we have not seen a like a good game for him in, what, a month and a half? Why? Is this because I of don't Hun- know. Is this because of Hunter Henry's return? That's a part it, of it. Is it, this because of having Austin Eckler has leveled up as a weapon in the offense? He's not just this peripheral piece. He's actually featured, and then you're talking about, okay, Hunter and Keenan and Mike Williams and Gordon and Eckler. Well, what's and- wild is two weeks ago it was 11 targets. Last week it was 10. I mean, that, and he still didn't put up a huge performance. That plummeted to four. And that, with a new OC change and four targets, you, similar shaky ground feeling beneath you. You will. Are you not in the camp then as a fantasy owner approaching trade deadlines of, ooh, I should go buy Keenan Allen low? You said last week I people still might. Would. You still would buy. I, I it, Low. I mean, I'm not trading away my great players for Keenan Allen. You would not trade. Uh, okay, so you said nobody in the upper echelon. Correct. Hmm. Well, hmm. so last week I think the trade that we said we would make was moving Juju to Keenan Allen. Right. Does that level change now? Where you say, well, <laughs> have you seen Juju three for six, <laughs> three for sixteen? So you, so we'd we'd stick with that. I'd I, rather have Keenan. I would with, rather have Keenan Allen with Philip Rivers. Yes. I, it's been horrifically bad for six weeks, but Keenan Allen is a top level talent. It it could turn around, and then he could just have great games the rest of the way. That's in the range of outcomes. I'm not projecting and, that, but just saying that I I want to get a player who's been real bad I think it is also worth that can be great having context to the games where he has not performed right Pittsburgh's defense has been great since they got Minka Fitzpatrick the Tennessee Titans defense is very tough Chicago is great against quarterback and wide receiver and then this game was a game where they were winning didn't need to throw the ball much because Green Bay didn't show up the next two matchups against Oakland and Kansas City those look like matchups that I think you're going to get more out of Keenan. Yeah, there were quite a few disappointing wide receiver performances this week. Stephon Diggs, despite Thielen leaving, Diggs goes one for four. It's wild, man. Uh, we talked about Shark and Conley, two starts of the uh, stinkers of the week, sorry. And then Terry McLaurin. Oh, they have the bye week. Come on, Case Keenum. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, heal up, buddy. At least, at least on this one, this was you know we set a must bench situation with no Case Keenum against Buffalo. You can't play Terry McLaurin, and and he did he did what was expected. So if Case Keenum comes back, even with the quarterback change, they're not throwing or the the head coach change, and they're not throwing the ball as much. If Case Keenum is back, I think Terry McLaurin is still going to have you know fine games. I, I need to hear from the resident Robbie Anderson truther. Sure. Two for 33 and four targets. Have you – where are you with Robbie Anderson? This in is a, a Miami game. In a dark place because Jamison Crowder was the target machine. Target, he was open frequently, and that's where Sam Darnold went. Uh, we're, we're a long ways away from Robbie Anderson's 125 yards and a touchdown against Dallas four weeks ago. He, I'm not playing him. I I thought he I thought he would have he would show signs of life not necessarily explode in this but give a, give us 60 70 yards. It feels like New England permanently scared Sam Darnold. Like he's you he know He does I mean? seem like, like he's regressed. I mean, he comes out he looked great against Dallas and then, you know, when he was seeing ghosts and and struggling, now it's it's a bunch of targets to Crowder and to Lev Bell all right by the line of scrimmage and that's just not Robbie Anderson's game. 
I think that something interesting is starting to make its way into my mind for fantasy football, and that is that you know there are certain teams where your confidence on range of outcomes, you know, your your confidence has been punched in the mouth. And so, you know, Juju's a good example, right? Like anything that happens in Pittsburgh right now, you don't know what the week-to-week Rudolph experiment's going to be like, right? And that probably translates over to a team like the Jets, right? You just don't know what the outcomes can be. You look at the schedule, and you say, my goodness, the the Giants, Washington, Oakland, Cincinnati. That's the next four weeks for Robbie Anderson. Those are the like low-hanging fruit that you think he can just jump up and grab four apples off the tree. But what, we'll be lucky to get one, yeah. maybe? Yep. That stinks. There are certain teams that are in that boat right now where you just you could you could roll the dice, you can get lucky. But I don't have a lot of confidence. Darren Waller finally had a kind of a, I mean, only got two targets. What yeah. are you doing, man? There were there were and a they, lot. They of, won the game. The Walrus is starving. <laughs> Feed him. Yeah, the, there were yeah, a at least lot of five tight ends targets to stay full. <laughs> that really disappointed. Which the good news there is that you know if you had to play one of those, there's a good chance you played against one of those. Because Darren Waller and Mark Andrews, we've talked about him. Jonu Smith, a guy that. You know, I was rolling with uh, places, and I liked them last week and this week. He was my start of the week. He sucked. Uh, Cameron Brake goosed. Uh, Greg Olson. I mean, three for 40. three for forty. Is here's what's crazy. Those that's, are like right off the bat. <laughs> that is a that is a that's a terrible line. It's not too bad. It's tight end. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, I mean, it's it's sad. Hopefully, you didn't start Chris Herndon. If you followed the news. Heading into the weekend, you found out he was active, but there was also the talk of this was a uh, emergency active. This was a token, hey, Ma, I'm active. This was not a, hey, Ma, I'm going to play. This was Adam Gase saying all week, I doubt it. He's he's not going to be active. And then Herndon's like, no, dude, I'm good to play. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I didn't want you to be. So Yeah, it's, it's weird. It gives you uh, hope for the future. Next week, he should be able to play while being active, but... What you've seen from the Jets, you just brought it up, Andy, gives you no confidence in anything. It's the there. Giants. I know, right? Like Come the on, match, man. The matchup is great. Everything. Yeah, but, but Ryan Griffin could have two touchdowns against the Giants. I, I'm just. This is more like a. This stinks. Herndon. <laughs> Herndon should be balling out oh, right now, dude. I, you know, I, I've, I had picked up the Jets' defense a couple weeks ago for this stretch run because they're not playing bad teams they're playing the bottom of the barrel teams but they just lost it, it's to a the mirror bottom match, of the exactly <laughs> and so yeah I'm, I'm dropping the jets dst uh not confident in any of their weapons man stinkers of the week presented <laughs> as always by odor eaters odor eaters the best in foot odor defense yeah Get those feet. You don't want those stinky feet. Remember when people were worried about DeAndre Hopkins and Mike Evans? All oh, those. Yes. It's almost it's, like they're really good players, and the first couple weeks really sting. And yeah, but I could say that about. Remember when people worried about Keenan Allen, and they were very correct so far. Yeah, I mean he started stronger than uh, he's been. Yeah, but here's the thing: what Andy is bringing up, I think, speaks to that point. He's. He's a really good wide receiver. Keenan Allen. Right. People are worried right now about Keenan Allen. It's been a longer stretch. But he's a great wide receiver. At the One end, of the best. In the end, that will win out on an NFL field. That's why we're still confident in Keenan Allen. That's why you said you trade for him, right? His fantasy yeah. production because he's just a great wide receiver. All right. I want to thank today's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A signed DeAndre Hopkins jersey. $68.80 yesterday at pristineauction.com. Use our registration code BALLERS. 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 Save five bucks on your first sports memorabilia purchase, hundreds of daily auctions. Thank you for tuning in with us. We will have a Monday night football game tonight. And a waiver show featuring Chris Herndon. Yeah. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.